Welcome to or welcome back to the Time Crunched Cycling Podcast. Today, we're going to be answering a couple questions from you, our audience. This is the stuff that you want answered that you're trying to solve in your time crunched life. Sort of like an AMA, but in a podcast format. How it works is if you have a question related to training, nutrition, racing, physiology, sports psychology, really anything to do with endurance, athletic realm of things, uh, submit it to us and we'll answer it on this podcast. Simply go to trainright.com backslash podcast and click on the button that says, ask a training question. Those questions get sent directly to me and I answer them on this show. A lot like what we're going to do right now. So first question today is I am an XC mountain bike racer. How much time per week do you recommend spending on the road versus trails? And that is from Stefano. All right. So the short answer is spend more time on the road further out from the competitive time period. So, uh, on the road side of things, I, it's a, just in general, this is the way I think about it from a coaching standpoint. The road is aerobic work causing less strain for the most part, rather than the mountain bike, which is more sports specific. And the more technical you get, you'll have more strain going on. It's also more, um, the specificity of, uh, pedaling and the whole body movement in, in single track is, is different than the road. Okay. So the short answer once again is spend more time further out from that competitive time period on the road. And then as the cross country race comes closer, you want to spend more time on the mountain bike in single track. Okay. So now the more of a detailed answer or kind of like longer answer when you're following the concepts of general periodization, which I did on a couple episodes back, you want to start developing the aerobic base first and have general training built up in the system so that it leads to higher capacities later. Okay. Now also during that general periodization or early on in the season, you want to address some limiters. And so here, here's where, uh, and again, from the base training standpoint or developing aerobic capacity, the road does a very good job of that. A big reason is you just get more pedal strokes in. Okay. When you, when you look at, you can go ahead and look at training peaks or however you look at your data, maybe Strava, and you look at the time spent coasting when you're in single track, it's quite a bit. Okay. That's, it, it's not saying that you're not doing anything. What it's saying is you're doing other things, right? And when it comes to like mechanical work being done and aerobic work being done, it's all about pedal strokes. So we want to do that early on early on and we want to do that on the road and that develops a very, very good aerobic base. Whereas when you're riding trail, you're, you're not getting as much as that aerobic benefit in all the time. There's a big asterisk to that because clearly, you know, when you ride for four hours on the mountain bike trail, you're still doing aerobic work, but you have quite a bit of anaerobic work and full body work that's going on there. Okay. So, uh, I'll, I'll leave it there for the, for a minute about limiters. Okay. So the limiters are things that are going to limit or inhibit your performance come competitive time period or come race day. So when, when I think about limiters for cross country mountain bike racer, usually like technical handling or technical capability is one of them. And so here's where riding in single track more for somebody who's technically limited riding single track in the early season may be beneficial. Okay. And, and I, for the grand scheme of things here, I think that if you're a mountain bike racer and you can ride in single track year round, yeah, definitely do that. Okay. Uh, maybe once or twice a year, like in general and base. And then as you get, you know, I'll talk about like the distribution of that, but as you get more specific to the race period, then you're riding, you know, more and more frequently there. So if technical handling is a limiter, prioritize single track more in the early season and base period to start working on your ability to, uh, negotiate the technical abilities of single track better. Okay. And it seems like very basic, but like you think about it, like you have more time, you have a bigger runway before you hit the race time, the race day. So you've got time to develop those things. Another thing that will work really well if technical handling is a limiter of yours, Hire a technical coach, hire a mountain bike coach to teach you 
better habits and to teach you things that you probably won't learn on your own. Okay. Third component component to this detailed answer is uh, durability. Okay. And durability is something that I talk about on this podcast quite a bit. You can go back and on shows much like the show with Dr. Steven Seiler, uh, where we talk about durability, which is essentially how you handle or how you hold up over the long run. So how are you feeling and how are you performing in our three, four, five, six, or how are you holding up or performing in day three, four, five of a stage race or hard training block? So, um, that durability in technical trail is a whole other animal than durability on a long road ride. Okay. All the pounding, the, the body movements that go on in single track, it's a full body sort of experience. Okay. And so this durability component shouldn't be overlooked. I think that if you follow this general approach that we're talking about here, um, your durability will hold up over time too, or it will be trained over time as well. Now, so how many days or how many sessions are we talking about? What's, what's the balance really for Stefano getting back to his question? I think early season, if it's more like, um, you know, 80, 20 or 70, 30 split road to mountain, meaning 80% of the time or 80, um, you know, 80% of the time you're spending on the road for your training and 20% in single track. If you're a pretty good technical rider, I think that's completely appropriate. 70, 30. Sure. Okay. So more, more time on the road to develop aerobically during the season, really look at like a 50, 50 split between road and mountain bike. Um, uh, the, the split between road and mountain bike training. Okay. And again, that's for the specificity. It's how you, how you pedal the bike, how you handle technical stuff. And th that's a huge thing too, to get in mind, like ride the mountain bike more. If you're a mountain bike racer going in competition, if you don't, I generally will see a couple things. One, more fatigue occurring for those who ride road a lot more because that, again, the upper body, the full body negotiation of technical trail, it's very taxing. So I'll see higher heart rates. I'll see lap times decrease late in the, um, in the day. And it's not coming from an aerobic fatigue necessarily. It's coming from that full body, that durability thing that we're talking about. So, um, so that 50, 50 split riding the mountain bike more as you're going into the race season, it could be even like, could be even a hundred percent depending on like, um, you know, how motivated or like what kind of trails you have and, and, you know, do you want to spend time on the road? But like, once you're in that season, you know, it, it ride single track a lot, quick caveat there, an easy day, even if you just have mountain bikes, like just go ride on the road because, um, even when I was team director for a mountain bike race, our easy days, we would ride mountain bikes, but on the road. And, and that's simply to, again, get away from the single track, which just beats you up more. It's more physically demanding. And that's why we're saying, keep the easy days easy, stay out of the single track on that day. Even though it's just, it's not, a, it's not as fun. Let's face it. There's a lot of stoke that goes on in single track. Anyway, uh, Stefano, I hope that that helps in answering your question. The second and final question of the day is when can I add strength training into my base training plan? And that's coming from Kathy. Uh, short answer is if you're new to strength training after you want to add it in after a progressive prep period of four to six weeks, if you're seasoned to strength training, you can, you can, Essentially, you probably have it in already, but you can build back in, um, for, for heavy strength training within about two to four weeks, um, into that base period. Now, let me, let me clarify some of the short answer stuff, cause it is kind of hard to answer this question, uh, with a short answer with heavy strength training. Uh, first, like what is heavy? Generally speaking, heavy is when we're doing short repetitions, usually higher sets, and you're lifting to a point of that, like almost failure, but to the point where it's like, you still have really good form and you could maybe do one or two more repetitions, but like you get fatigued from that. So, uh, 
you know, low repetitions, four to six, generally speaking, maybe like with high velocity movement or like, like snatches and cleans could be three, you know, that could be a, that's one set of three repetitions. So we're talking, moving some heavy stuff. Okay. That's what we mean by heavy. Now, base period is actually a good time for heavy strength training because for most of us in this endurance uh, athletics, it's less specific to our primary sport and less specific to that competitive time period. Okay. Uh, also, when we talk about limiters, like we did in, in Stefano's question with mountain bike, uh, there may be some limiters here, limiters of strength that could hold us back in our endurance uh, primary sport. So lifting heavy in, in incorporating strength training into a base period is actually a very good time for it, Kathy. So I'm glad you an, uh, asked this question. Now, let me just clarify some of this um, after four to six weeks or after two to four weeks. Don't add in heavy strength training right away if you haven't been doing strength training for a while. The reason being is your body's not ready for it. Your muscles, ligaments, tendons, all the things not ready for it. You'll hurt yourself. So my best advice is to follow a moderate heavy program or even like a body weight activation sort of program um, to prepare you for heavier loads down the road. If you want more education or you want to do a deeper dive on this, go back through the podcast and find Erin Carson's episodes. I've done two shows with her where we talk about um, how to properly load and kind of build into this. Um, in addition to that, my colleague, Sarah, we, we talked about this too, just recently. I can't remember the episode name, but, uh, look for strength training in the, in the title of some of the podcasts. We talk about some of this preparatory time period. And really I find that, um, if you've been doing strength training kind of over your athletic life, reintroduce strength training for two to four weeks and then start to go heavy. If you're really, really new, you've never done strength training you probably need longer. So that's why I say four to six weeks is like on the very short end, but like eight weeks of like activation to moderately loaded strength training before you go into heavy. Um, and that's just for your own safety. Like you'll, you'll hurt yourself. If you start reading all the articles and say, go heavy, go heavy, go heavy. Sure. Then you do a heavy back squat and you're out for the season. Could be, I've seen it. So all that being said, um, you know, high muscular strain and fatigue does occur when you lift heavy. And this is why, again, going back into the base time period, this is why we want to do it here. And when we're lifting heavy, we generally want the strain and stress from our primary sport of riding bikes or triathlon or whatever it is to be lower. So volumes lower, intensity is lower on the bike. Um, you can still ramp up if you do things wisely. You can still have moderate to somewhat high volume on the bike, but like in, in general, if I'm going heavy and I've got like strain and fatigue coming from the, the gym, I'm going to rein back the volume as in, and definitely the, the intensity on the bike. So just know that when you, when you turn up a dial of one thing, you normally need to turn a dial down on the other. And so for an endurance athlete, if the gym gets dialed up, we're going to dial down the bike or dial down the primary sport. Okay. So those, those are the questions answered today, I, I guess in summary, um, you know, there's, there's a, a balanced approach to, uh, mountain bike racing in particular sports specificity, ride your mountain bike more as you're going into the main competitive time period. And then when you're in that base period, an 80, 20 or 70, 30 split, meaning 80% of the time you're riding the road bike, which would be like, you know, if you're riding six days a week, uh, you know, four to five days a week should be on the road bike in that general prep time period. As you get toward closer in the season, ride the mountain bike more. And then finally, when should I add in uh, heavy strength training for Kathy? You really want to do that after you've had a preparatory time period and your body can handle it. So that's, those are the quick summaries of those all, um, actually linked to some, uh, fun research about all this and how I back up the answers that I've given here today. And I'll put that on the trainwright.com backslash podcast website landing page. Uh, if you like what you heard here today in our shorter format, where we're answering, you know, questions from our audience, 
share it with friends because that that's how we grow and that's how we keep on um being able to produce the content that we're doing here on the podcast okay rate and review us on apple Podcasts. you can find us on youtube and again if you've got a question go to trainright.com backslash podcast and click on ask a training question and i'd be happy to answer them. thanks <laughs>